Okay, good. We're live. Fantastic. It's Thursday, um, 12 noon, which means we are doing a live. Utterly breast today that I don't have load sharing during my regular Thursday live session. Can't believe it. <laughs> I have so many sessions today that I was just absolutely, I was just so thrilled. So welcome if you're joining today. Remember, if you want me to say hi and give you a shout out, just put something in the comments. Uh, I can see Marisa has just joined on Insta. Welcome, welcome. Lower P joined as well, and Destiny Wellness. Oh, Marty, hello. Welcome today. Nice to have you on. Um, I can also see on Facebook, we are starting to get some people logging in. So just to say hi in the comments so that I can mention your name, that'll be awesome. Janine, I can see you're in. Fantastic. Hello, hello. So today's quite exciting. Um, we are talking about a beautiful oil for the heart, and it's episode 34 already in my single series. So if you need to go and catch the replay of any of the previous ones, remember I do have a YouTube channel. You can go and follow me there or subscribe and then you'll get notified. Um, but you can always go and find me um, in the feed as well, in my Facebook page or in my Instagram, IGETV. Uh, rockstar. Thanks, Marty. <laughs> rockstar right back at you. And I also have Catherine. Fantastic. Welcome on Insta. You're usually on Facebook, so it's good to have you on Insta today. Uh, quite a difference. <laughs> and then Marie, I can see you've logged in on Facebook. Welcome. So let's get started. Um, I can see uh, Catherine has responded very appropriately with a lot of roses in the comments on IDE because today, of course, we are talking about the queen of all oils, Rose. And uh, this month, it is a limited edition for my favorite essential oil company. So if you are not going to get your hands on this one, you are probably going to really regret it. So today is going to be a fun learning experience because I've actually had this oil in my stash for quite a while now, probably uh, almost two years. And it's one of those spoil yourself ones that I got um, around two years ago. And I've been using it so sparingly because it is one of the most precious oils out there. Colleen has also just joined. Welcome, welcome. So, uh, and Ruthie, fantastic, calling me Dr. T. Yes, Dr. T here. <laughs> All the way from my Botanicomy page, Alchemy of Soothing Botanic Ingredients. And I'm here every Thursday doing a little bit of education about favorite essential oils and how they can support the body and mind um, the natural way. I can also see Alka's joined in all the way from Netherlands on IGE. Welcome, welcome. So let's get started. Um, sweet, beguiling, unmistakably romantic. Rose is just one of those absolute sought after um, fragrances. If you've got the real thing, not the sickly sweet fake stuff, because that could actually make you quite nauseous, or it does me anyway. So rose is one of the most precious and sought after essential oils. Um, and it's called the queen of all oils because you need an astonishing 10,000 blooms to be able to produce just five milliliters of pure rose essential oil. So can I tell you, if you're purchasing even a 500 rand pure essential oil off the shelf in a pharmacy, I guarantee you it's not pure. Um, absolutely impossible. The process of actually um, getting those oils from the blooms, you need to harvest the blooms on the same day that you are going to be distilling. Um, otherwise, the fragrance is gone. <laughs> and if any of you have, try making your own rose water at home, I do very regularly. It's a very nice astringent for my skin. You'll also know that picking that rose at the right time of day is incredibly important and more so how quickly you can get that rose distilled. Um, Marty is saying she really loves rose oil um, and yeah, she's only going to get hers for the first time now. I am very blessed. Yes, Marty, I have had mine for a while. I actually imported it from the UK roughly two years ago and now I'm really happy because now I can get some more of it this month. So it's quite exciting so that I don't have to use it so sparingly because I've got to say, I think there's probably about three drops left um, in this 10 milliliter that I have now. So my next one is almost en route and it's probably going to arrive at my house in the next couple of days. All right, so I can also see Aleka's just well, um, logged in. Welcome, welcome. So let's get started. Um, knowing now that 10,000 rose blossoms um, are needed to make only 5 milliliters of oil, it's probably going to cost you around $600 for 500 milliliters if you're going to be buying the pure um, tested grade essential oil. And that's why my favorite essential oil company sells it um, pre-diluted with a little bit of carrier oil in a 10 ml row bottle. Makes it more affordable. 
um, so we can start using it immediately and applying it to our skins. And that's probably one of the very big things about rose oil. Um, we all know it's really good for the emotions and we'll get into that today as well. Um, but I think it's an incredible essential oil, especially in a roller bottle, nice and nifty because it's incredibly good to support good skin health as well. All right, so um, to enhance your skincare routine, obviously we'll get into that today. There's a very good reason why it enhances your skincare routine, um, but it's also really good at uplifting the mood at the same time. So um, remember that saying, uh, stop and smell the roses. <laughs> There's a really good reason for that. Um, can you feel the vibe of good health? And before you think I'm getting too esoteric on you, Remember, microbiologist here, incredibly scientific about it, Albert Einstein had it right. Everything is energy. And whether you believe in energy or not, um, everything is energy. So the power of the rose is in the frequency of the essential oil. It is one of the highest frequencies out there. And disease, dis-ease, illness, um, low mood conditions, negative thoughts, uh, negative thought patterns, all of those have to do with very low vibrations or megahertz. And rose essential oil can uplift those because it is so incredibly high in frequency. I can also see Aircon Guy SA is logged in. It's not Aircon Guy. <laughs> it's his wife using his account. So welcome, welcome. So um, the rose frequency is actually one of the, the highest essential oils out there and it is at 320 megahertz. And there's a lot of good books out there that you can go and do a little bit of digging in to see what the various essential oils are. Lavender, for example, is just over 100. So you can see that rose being at 320 is actually exceptionally high. And I have seen some reports that black um, spruce also has a high frequency, but I need to do a little bit more digging there just to make sure that I'm verifying the facts. I can also see Naomi Blom Goosen is logged in. Welcome, welcome. First time I'm seeing you on Facebook today. Hope you learned something precious about this beautiful, precious oil. So um, let's get to the emotional side first. Usually I delve straight into the chemical constituents and we go for the science and the physical benefits. But let, let's look at the emotional side because that is probably what rose oil is known for um, best. So when you're going to be comparing something like um, my favorite essence, which I use when I'm cooking, um, rose water, uh, Nielsen Massey. Although it is incredibly pure, according to the bottle, but we all know that these kind of things are unregulated, so they can really say anything on the bottle. It's got a very sweet smell to it. Um, I use this to bake uh, Turkish Delight macaroons, for example, or when I'm making a rose flavored dessert. I actually posted a chia recipe, chia pudding recipe for breakfast earlier in the week on my page, so please go have a look at that recipe. It's utterly delicious. But this is definitely that that normal sweetie smell that we're so used to with rose. There could be quite a lot of rose in there because I actually have a very fragrant rose growing in my garden, specifically um, the one that I'm using to make my own rose water as a, as a toner for my skin because it's such a beautiful astringent. Um, and my rose in the garden probably smells quite similar to, to this essence. But when I compare it, for example, to my Damask Rose Pure Essential Oil, in a little bit of carrier which is no fragrance um, so there's no carrier imparting its fragrance on the rose oil it's almost got a more grassy smell to it and I know one of my very best friends Shelly she always says this one smells a little bit more woody to her and I'm getting to to the stage where I think she smells wood when I smell grass but it definitely has that more plant-like um, fragrance to it compared to for example a rose water that you would get off the shelf that you were going to be able to cook with um, so on the emotional side, when you're smelling that, the chemical constituents that are going to be traveling up the nasal passage is going to be mainly citra, um, uh, sorry, citronellol, geranol, and nerol, and they are there in quite high concentrations. And what they're doing, obviously, is um, affecting brain chemistry on the one side, but also affecting the physical um, aspects of the body and supporting it in some kind of matter. And if we start looking at the emotional side specifically, this queen of oils is called the oil of self-love and self-esteem, even self-acceptance. Pretty much like patchouli. Patchouli has quite a, um, got quite a few emotional benefits specifically in that arena as well. And because patchouli is a base oil, for example, and its fragrance lasts much longer, um, it's going to be a good oil to combine with rose to make that fragrance last a little bit longer. 
So this is a good oil to always, always apply um, over the heart. It also means it's very precious. It's going to stay inside your clothing. So when you need that kick of rose, it's always going to be there um, for a little bit longer, especially if it's in a carrier oil, because the carrier oil, uh, vegetable oil, just captures that aromatic molecule um, and it keeps it on your skin for longer so it doesn't diffuse back into the air so quickly because aromatic molecules diffuse. That's what they do. That's why we smell them simply when we're opening a bottle. If we also look more at this emotional side, um, using it as a perfume is then obviously going to give you all the emotional benefits. Um, it's going to decrease the toxic load, by the way, of all the nasties that we do get in perfume. So, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a very good one to be using as a perfume, especially if you're going to combine it with things like neroli, for example, or with patchouli. It goes really well with sandalwood, um, geranium, lavender, all the flower oils, and then always just add sort of a a resiny, woody um, base tone to that so that you can actually keep the fragrance on your skin for longer, make it last a little bit longer. So emotionally, it's sort of going to help you feel from, uh, get from feeling isolated. Um, so here we're thinking negative thoughts. So those lower, lower megahertz negative thought patterns. So feeling sad, um, slight anxiousness, for example, um, feeling very isolated. And I know there's a lot of us, even introverts like me, um, at the moment that are really, we, uh, this, this whole load shedding thing, together with what's going on in the environment out there, is, is not playing well with my emotions at the moment. So I have been reaching for my rose oil quite often um, in the past week, and it really has supported me quite well. Um, and it's because we get into that negative thought pattern and it just switches that negative thought pattern the other way around because it is able to increase the frequency. All right, that megahertz going because this is at 320. All right, it might be slightly lower because we've added carrier oil to this because both of them are now going to have an effect, but the rose on itself is at 320. And what they say with the rose specifically, if you're going to be putting it over the heart area, is it's going to open you up to that heavenly love. You know that love that we need <clears throat> inherently to heal because our bodies are designed to heal naturally. So it's opening up your heart to that healing or what they call agape love. All right, so really, really precious oil for that. Um, and very good also then, for example, for grief um, when you're going through a grieving process or when you're feeling slightly sad. And for that very good reason, rose is actually part of one of our consoling blends when we are trying to work through grief. Also one of my favorite blends that I use as a perfume almost daily from my favorite essential oil company. It's got quite a nice high concentration of rose oil in there as well because of that higher frequency. <clears throat> so Ruthie is asking where one could find the frequencies of various oils. You can just go and search online. I haven't found a lot of online articles specifically, but I do know that there's quite a lot of hard copy books out there. So what I'll do, Ruthie, is I'll just investigate that for you a little bit and maybe send you through a list um, of some of the articles or some of the books that you could look at. Pushpa is also just logged in. Welcome, welcome. Nice to have you on today. All right, so that is definitely on the emotional side. And usually I end off with the emotional side, but I think because the emotional side of this oil is so strong, we definitely needed to start with that. And remember, it's got to do with energies, as Albert Einstein said. It's not just woo-woo. And here is the scientist, all the energy stuff and not even the, the emotional side, all of that is affected by our brain chemistry. And because essential oils are, have the ability to um, affect the limbic brain because it reaches it so quickly through the olfactory nerve senses, it has the ability to play with the neurotransmitters and therefore affect our mood and our energy. All right, so let's now start looking at the emotional versus physical combination, I'd say. Because let's, uh, let, let's not beat around the bush. When you've got to perform in the bedroom, it's got a lot to do with emotion more than it does with the physical body. Yes, there's a lot to do with the physical body, but emotionally and, and what you're feeling is definitely going to play an incredibly important role. Um, Falk Vane Janine. That's quite a nice name. On Insta has just joined as well. Welcome, welcome. So when we start looking at romance side for Rose, because just think about it, Roses have always been associated with romance. Um, it really, really has a really um, important role to play, specifically with good um, sexuality. So it has the ability to increase or support the increase, for example, um, of semen production. There's a lot of men with prostate um, issues that can find support from using rose essential oil, but not just on the men's side. It's very good on the women's side as well, because it makes us 
accept ourselves. So we're maybe a little bit more daring because um, we are not so critical of how we think we look because we are always self-critical. And rose oil can definitely assist there. So very good for those users as well. And because it's now more to the physical side, also really good for us for the skin, it's going to be really beneficial. But let's get to that in a second. Let's first talk about a beautiful recipe which we call Feel the Romance Self. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go through this amazing recipe. And of course, as always, if you would like me to send that straight to your phone, just put in the comments the word um, romance. All right, so if you want the recipe that I'm gonna talk about now, just in the comment section, please go type romance. So how you make this salve or even carrier oil, um, you would add five drops of your um, rose uh, touch. And then with that, you're going to add three drops of ylang ylang, which is also really good for female hormone health, by the way. Um, it's very balancing to the hormones. Um, and then you can add two drops of bergamot or bergamot, uh, depending on it, however you say that. Bergamot, incredibly uplifting to the mood, incredibly good um, just to support general um, I am okay I am calm and relaxed and I am collected that's what the bergamot is doing and then one drop sandalwood because one drop of sandalwood is definitely going to add that additional aphrodisiac benefit so those oils together you can then either add to a salve or to a nice carrier oil um, I like to use grapeseed oil because it's suitable to all skin types almond seed or um, almond is I'm always a little wary of that because of people with nut allergies, for example. So grape works really well. Fractionated coconut oil will work really well as well. Even jojoba because it's nice and waxy. And now because it's winter, your skin might need a little bit more lubrication and ceramide. So why not go for olive oil? Um, and then you can use that essential oil um, as a nice um, carrier oil or a lotion or a salve if you're going to put that into a salve for a very nice sensual massage. Okay, so that's a really nice recipe. It smells absolutely fragrant and delicious. So if you want that recipe to straight to your phone, just comment romance. Then we're going to now start moving over to um, the more, let's, let's call it physical, because it has antispasmodic activity. It also has um, uh, the antidepressant and, the, and the, the sedative effect. So that's on more on the emotional side, but the sedative effect here is more relaxing the muscles as well. Um, and it is going to calm the, the mood and the mind, which means you're going to get better restful sleep. So combining, here's a top tip if you're going to go that way. Um, neroli is one of those that people really, that really struggle with sleep, sometimes find a lot of relief from to fall asleep quicker. And I like adding rose to that because it is so incredibly calming. And because it is such a precious oil, all you need is one roll of rose on the one palm. And then I put a, a roll of neroli on the other arm um, and I rub them together. And I inhale deeply. Um, and that really calms the senses just before I get into bed for my night routine with my diffuser going um, and the things that I run through my head in the evening before I go to bed. Um, so it just calms me down for that. So on the physical side, it really improves my um, ability to fall asleep quicker. That's my top tip. Um, then if we start also looking at the gut health, because remember that is my passion, um, is supporting good gut health, because through good gut health, our energy levels are good, um, we always feel good, and that's where that feeling good vibe health also comes from. Um, so the geranial that's in the rose is exceptionally good in supporting the good bacteria in your gut health. And you'll remember a little while ago when I was talking about geranium in my single series, that's one of the essential oils that is really good in supporting good gut health. And because those chemical constituents are shared between rose and the poor man's rose geranium, um, it's gonna have the same benefits here as well. So a good role on the tummy is definitely going to be very supportive as well. Um, if we also look at the, the seizure part, so the antispasmodic part, a lot of people who do suffer from conditions where they have seizures, for example, or nerve issues or even brain issues, really find support in using this rose essential oil, either topically or aromatically. I just want to check whether I've run through my entire list there. There we go. And now I can move over to my favorite part for the rose, which is on the skin. 
Um, so rose essential oil is what we call cytophylactic. Now that is a big word, um, but it's one that I like to say very often because there's a lot of our oils that actually have that ability. What that means is that they are cell regenerating, so they support good cell turnover. And anything that does that means it's really good for your facial skin. So um, fine lines and wrinkles, for example, or minor skin discolorations. Um, the, definitely those skin discolorations that we develop over time from being in the sun, for example. Um, and rose essential oil is exceptional there, but not only that, lavender, for example, is also cytophylactic. That's why I keep next to the stove so that when I do burn myself, I just put it onto the burn really quickly um, to take the stinging away and obviously to help the cell regeneration. So rose is going to help with that as well. But rose goes a step further. Rose actually increases the ability of um, the cell membranes to take up the essential oil and the good chemical constituents, right? So it increases um, the ability of whatever it is that you're going to be putting onto your face, that it's, it supports the ability to penetrate. Um, so basically, here's a top tip, don't put the rose on after your facial moisturizer. Apply it, for example, under the delicate eye area before you apply whatever product it is that you're going to be applying to your skin. The reason why we're saying that is if there are any um, beneficial or supportive constituents in whatever it is that you're going to put on your face that's in your cream, for example, it's just going to make the penetration better and it's going to make it work better. So there we go. Add the rose before you add all your other products. And obviously, if you're going to be using a rose hydrosol or if you're going to be making your own rose water at home, let the, the roses be organic, please. There's no point in growing your own roses and then you spray them for hojas and then you make a rose water because then all the pesticides is just going to go into your face because the rose is going to make it penetrate deeper. All right, so rose first and hydrosol, for example. I love the fragrance of that. It just it puts a smile on my face when I put on a rose tone and before I put on my rose essential oil under my eyes and then also then with the very good face cream over that. And then I've got one more interesting recipe for you. So I have um, an allergy to the dust, for example, and the cat hair from my cats that sleep on my bed. Um, they're my children. I love them. There is no way I'm going to shun them out of my bedroom or off my bed ever. Just, it, does, it won't happen. So I unfortunately cannot take away the root cause, but I definitely can support the symptoms that come afterwards. And I've got this really amazing, what I call my swollen eye blend. And for quite some time, I've had to produce the swollen eye blend for others that needed assistance. Um, but I needed to, to take one of the ingredients out because the rose oil is so exceptionally um, precious to me, right? So I've advertised this swollen eye blend before, but today you're going to get the full recipe because I actually add rose oil to mine. And it's to increase the penetration of the other chemical constituents, but also because it is so cell regenerating. So here is Tanya's swollen eye recipe. And the reason, obviously, that I need to use it quite often is, um, especially now in winter, my one cat really likes to sleep right here, just here. <laughs> and he's very dirty. He doesn't bath himself. Um, so some mornings I wake up and there's like a little, you know, just it just swells. And there's like this little blip. Um, and then I just apply this underneath my eye and it actually subsides quite quickly. So what I like to add to my swollen eye blend, if you want that recipe straight to your phone, the comment that you're going to have to make, please, is swollen. Just go and put that in the comments for me. Um, so you are going to take a teeny tiny sample bottle because you don't need a lot of the stuff. It's going to last you quite a long time. And you're simply going to put it into this bottle. And then when you're ready to use it, um, there's going to be a little small rubber stop on, stop on the inside. And you're just going to turn it over like that. And then you'll see there's a little bit of liquid that comes out. And all you're going to do is you're going to gently tap that solution below the eye area. Please do not get it into the eye. It's going to actually um, be quite sore. <laughs> it's going to sting. Remember, if the oils that you're using are pure, the, the way that you are going to get it um, to not uh, sting in your eye is just put more carrier oil around your eye. Never add water because then you're just going to spread it. Oil and water don't mix. It's going to make it sting a little bit. Just sting a little bit more. So definitely a more carrier oil if it does by accident get into the eye. But that's all you need. Did you see that was like half, a no, quarter drop. And all I did was just dabbed it under my eye. So how you make this recipe really precious is you take your two milliliter sample bottle. To that, you are going to add six drops of carrier. I like to use jojoba because my face really loves jojoba. It's very close to the semen of the skin. So very, very, uh, tongue twister there, really rejuvenating, but also because it's waxy, it's nice um, lubrication. 
<clears throat> so six drops jojoba and then to that I'm going to add only three drops necessary of my very precious rose touch essential oil mix then you're going to add three drop three drops of turmeric so everything is in threes except the jojoba that's six drops okay so it's the six drops of jojoba then the three drops rose, rose touch three drops turmeric because that's very anti-inflammatory um, three drops geranium geranium is really good for the eyes as well geranium is very good for the skin especially if you've got skin conditions three drops of frankincense because again it's anti-inflammatory remember it's got those alpha pinenes which um, increases the action of gobbling up inflammation that's how that one works three drops of eucalyptus and you're thinking whoa eucalyptus so close to my eyes remember you're using very little but the eucalyptus is very good in clarifying the eyes especially if it is allergy related and then three drops three drops of juniper berry <laughs> so um, the juniper berry again a very clarifying oil um, so really good to place that under the eye so the oils there is geranium frank eucalyptus juniper turmeric and then the rose touch all three drops of each and then six drops of your jojoba mix it really nicely and keep it in your cupboard in the morning when you wake up so that you can dot it underneath the eyes if necessary so it was really good it was a nice lesson today rose is just absolutely one of those really precious oils the queen of oils for a very good reason very expensive very sought after um, and please make sure that you if you are going to be using a rose oil that you're not going to be using a synthetic cheap one because it's just not gonna give you that therapeutic benefit that's not what you're after if you want it to just smell nice awesome uh, but not for the the tester grade therapeutic applications that I was discussing today So before we log off and I say thank you so much for all of you joining I can see Joanne Tricker has just joined Unfortunately, you're a little bit late, but please don't stress about it. You can always watch the replay in my YouTube channel um, You can go and watch it again in the live feed of my Facebook page Called Botanicomy and if you found this useful, of course, please share <laughs> So that we can get the word out there and because IGE does not in a live actually let me know who wants what blend I am just quickly going to make a note here of who wanted which recipe um, so that I can get that off to your phones so sorry for all the writing but the lesson is finished thank you so much I will see you all next week Thursday for my next live on botanicomy and alchemy of soothing botanic ingredients have a really good Thursday and if you have so much load shedding, shedding, shedding as I do, smear some of that rose over your heart. You're definitely going to need it. Thank you. Bye-bye.